Hello everyone! Today we're going to learn how to make a cheap and easy product photography backdrop that stores flat and doesn't take up very much space. Tools for the project include a cutting instrument to cut down your vinyl. I use a utility knife. A straight edge or a ruler. This is optional as well as the tape is optional and I'll tell you why later. Uh, these scraper tools are also optional and um, I actually didn't end up using them all that much because I felt like I got better results without them but I'll also touch on that later. You will also need some contact paper or vinyl. I prefer to get the self-adhesive type so that you don't have to use any glue to attach it to your backing board. Uh, these are just two of the colors I got. I have a whole bunch and you'll see them here in this video. And finally, you will need a surface to put your vinyl on. I am using foam core, but you could also use plywood or any other sturdy surface. And actually, finally, you are going to need backdrop board brackets. And I'll put a link to those in the description. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is cut down your vinyl to the size of your backing board. I am doing fairly large backing boards for mine because the things I want to photograph are fairly large but you could make small ones just as easily. <laughs> so I find that having a heavy object to hold down one side of the vinyl works really well to help you keep it in place as you're cutting it down. This time I used a ruler and a knife. I had a lot of issues keeping it in place while I was doing this, so later on I did find a better way, which I'll show you now. If you want to do it this way though, power to you. The easier way to cut down the vinyl that I found was to lay the vinyl face side down on your cutting mat and then put your backing board over top of it. Um, this will keep it flat so that it's not always rolling on you and then you can actually use the edge of your backing board as the ruler to cut it. I do recommend cutting your vinyl slightly larger than what you're going to need. So as you can see here, I pulled a little extra on the opposite end that I'm cutting. Um, this will allow you to have like a slight skew as you're applying it and you're not going to show any weird white edges. get ready to apply the vinyl, I like to visualize it first. I'm going to have to apply two of these side by side to cover my entire backing board. When you're satisfied with how it looks on the board, it's time to do your final peel. Gently grab the corner without moving it too much and peel the vinyl away from its protective paper. Now you're going to stick that corner as well as you can and then grab the underlying piece of paper and slowly start pulling away from the corner while using your other hand to press firmly and smoothly to keep it going on straight. This might take a little practice. I have found that it is easier to do with your hand because you're able to feel any bumps or if it's starting to snag on anything. I did try to do this with the tool and I found that it was catching in weird ways and it was causing the occasional wrinkle and it was really, really hard to get that wrinkle out once it appeared. Using my fingers, I'm able to feel it before it's really pressed down and able to fix it. So I got the best results without the tools, but you could do it either way. If you have a lot of experience with using those tools, then it would probably work better. So 
from here it's just the same process just keep on pulling and pushing with your other hand as you can see it goes on pretty quick and pretty smoothly for this one I wanted to show you that I actually managed to put it on a skewed and you can see a little bit of the white lip of the board if this happens to you it's not too big of a deal you can just keep that edge on the outside so that it's never in the shot or you can just trim your board down and get rid of it for good for the second piece here I needed to try to line it up with the piece that I already had applied it's not as noticeable with this particular pattern so I didn't have to worry too much about it but certain patterns will be very obvious if they don't line up so you might have to spend a little bit of extra time getting that as good as you can I'm gonna speed up the application of this final piece and I'll show you the results in a moment As you can see I did end up using the scraper tool to do a final pass on the entire board. This just helped make sure that all the air bubbles were out and that it had a really good seal to the board underneath. But here is the final result. Once you're done flip it over and use your knife and the edge of the board to cut off any excess. This is where your optional tape will come in. If you want to tape the edges to make sure that it never lifts off and it's a little bit more protected, then this is when you would do that now. As you can see, I already have the opposite uh, side finished with a different vinyl paper. So these are dual sided and you get more use for your space. When choosing which pattern to put on the front and the back of each given board, I tried to pick two patterns that I probably wouldn't pair together since I won't be able to use them together. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's super simple. It gives you beautiful backgrounds, a whole bunch of variety that you can mix and match to your heart's content. I'm going to show you a few more of the backings that I put together in time lapse and then we'll take some pictures. And once we put the corners on, it'll look something like this. I really struggle with product photography, so a background like this really elevates my game and makes my stuff look so much better. Thank you so much for watching and please let me know in the comments if you make some boards yourself and how they work out. See you next time. Bye guys.